So here we're going to talk about viruses and we're going to do an introduction to viruses. Um, now viruses are in fact a true obligate intracellular parasite. And this means that one of the things viruses cannot do is survive outside of cells. And viruses always take, they're always going to be a parasite. There is no symbiotic relationship with a virus and us. So now there are going to be viruses that are going to be categorized basically based on their nucleic acids. And so they, we're going to have DNA viruses. And we're going to have RNA viruses. And then the viruses are going to have to have a target. And so their cellular target is known as tropism. So HIV targets CD4 T cells, measles targets CD4 T cells, Epstein Barr virus targets B cells. So they all have a tropism for a particular cell type. Now, just as a review of cell biology, because again, our um, viruses are going to infect our cells and they're going to take over our cells. So within our cells, of course, we have our cell membrane. And on our cell membrane, we are going to have proteins. So this is going to be a receptor. This is receptor X. It's going to be different for different viruses. Our virus is going to come along and bind to receptor X by one of their proteins. And inside of the virus, you're going to have nucleic acids. Now, viruses are going to use our cells, so there's, they're stuck with how we um, replicate their stuff there they have to use our own system so remember for us we have DNA becomes RNA and becomes proteins and so our DNA viruses are going to follow the same route and our RNA viruses are going to start at the RNA level but they all have to go through this process. They all have to eventually make proteins, and then they're going to make more um, virus particles, and they will um, get released. Now, DNA, remember, is going to be in a nucleus. So most DNA viruses are going to replicate in the nucleus. And there is an exception, of course, and that's our pox virus. So this is variola, major, or vaccinia. Variola major is smallpox. Vaccinia is cowpox. Let me move this so I have more space. And then, of course, our RNA viruses are not going to be in the nucleus because our machinery for, repli for transcribing RNA is in the cytoplasm. So most will replicate in the cytoplasm. The cytosol. Um, and there is, of course, exceptions. And the, one exception for this is going to be influenza. And influenza replicates in the nucleus even though it's an RNA virus. And that's because it needs our RNA primers. Most virus um, nucleic acids are circular um, or linear, but small. Um, our influence is very unique in that it has strands of RNA, and so it needs a lot of primers to replicate its genome. 
And so it just borrows our primers in the nucleus that we would use to, to transcribe our DNA, and then it's able to make its own um, genome and its own proteins. Now, the components are, of a virus can be very diverse depending on the viruses. We have very simple viruses and we have very complex viruses. But you can really break it up into necessary, and not required. So all viruses are going to have to have a genome. And all viruses are going to have to have proteins that protect it, such as a capsid. And then not required is going to be um, an envelope. Not all viruses have an envelope. If it is an envelope virus, it can, it is of course going to be required. Um, and then we have to have proteins. Um, and also not required are going to be immune evasion genes. And accessory genes. So basically a virus can survive with its genome and some proteins associated, especially with like a capsid has to be protective. And then um, other viruses are going to bring along other things. We're going to have very complicated viruses such as our DNA viruses and they're going to be able to create a lot of proteins that will evade the immune response, um, which we'll talk about when we get to those viruses. Now with respect to the nucleic acids, again we're going to have RNA viruses and we're going to have DNA viruses. And the RNA viruses can be a positive strand virus, or it can be a negative strand virus. Okay, so the positive strand virus is equal to messenger RNA, and so this can become proteins directly. Your negative strand virus is going to have to become positive strand, and then this equals messenger RNA, and then you get proteins. So this step requires a virus enzyme, which is a polymerase. Okay, so our positive strand viruses can get into a cell and start making proteins immediately. Our negative strand viruses are going to require a virus polymerase um, in order to generate a positive strand. Now our DNA can be of two types as well. We have our double-stranded DNA and we have our single-stranded DNA. And then both of these are DNA, so they will both have to transcribe into RNA. And then they can become proteins. So there's some classification that should be um, learned about our viruses. Again, these are DNA viruses. We have double-stranded DNA which are a majority of our viruses. And then we have a few single-stranded DNA viruses that are important. Parvovirus is for animals mostly, but if humans can get infected as well. Now you'll see it says here naked or enveloped. So naked means it has a capsid only. An envelope means it has a capsid and an envelope. And the envelopes are lipid bilayers with proteins attached to it, of course. So we have a few viruses. We have adenoviruses. These are going to be the common cold. There are many of them. We have human papillomaviruses. These are going to be associated with cervical cancer. Uh, 
and there is a vaccine. And then we have polyoma virus, which is called BK polyoma, and this is important for immune compromise. This doesn't cause trouble in immune competent individuals. Um, and then we have our hep adenoviruses, and these are going to be hep B. So hep B, hepatitis B, is a DNA virus. Uh, we have our herpes simplex viruses. These are going to be large viruses, have a lot of immune evasions. Epstein-Barr virus is one, infects B cells. Human herpes simplex virus, um, one and human herpes simplex virus 2. Um, we also have varicella zoster virus. So chicken pox is not a pox virus, it's an actual um, herpes virus. And then we have a real pox virus which is going to be variola major. Which is smallpox. Now the vaccine was made from cowpox, not box, pox, which is vaccinia virus. Okay, so those are important DNA viruses. Now with respect to RNA viruses, again, we have our single-stranded RNAs that can be plus or minus, and we do have one double-stranded DNA RNA virus, which comes in with both plus and minus attached, and that's going to be our real virus. So real viruses are things like rotavirus, and this is going to be for GI infections. Now, remember our plus is going to be the same as messenger RNA, and our minus is referred to as an anti-sense. So messenger RNA is sense RNA, and negative RNA is anti-sense RNA. Now we also again have our naked or capsid only, and we have our envelope, which is capsid and um, your envelope. So for our naked, no envelope, we have our um, the coronavirus, and an important member of this is hepatitis A. And so hepatitis B was a DNA virus. Hepatitis A and hepatitis C are both um, RNA viruses. Hepatitis A and C are both positive strand. A is a naked virus. This is transmitted fecal oral. And our hepatitis C is our flavivirus. And this is transmitted via blood or secretions. And this one is going to be enveloped. Now our coronavirus, of course, has become famous. We have our SARS-1, our SARS-CoV-2. We have our Middle Eastern MERS virus is lumped in there. These are also going to cause common colds. So they're similar to um, your adenoviruses in that respect. We also have arenaviruses. Um, we have a virus called LCMV that's an arenavirus. Um, we have our buniviruses, which are Hanta viruses. Um, we have a raptoviridae, which is our rabies. And this is bullet-shaped. Orthomyxoviruses are influenza. We have paramyxoviruses. This is going to be measles, mumps, rubella. And so these are all going to be important uh, viruses for humans. Um, now, in general, virus structure is simple, so we're going to have a capsid. A lot of them have what we call icosahedral capsids. Um, and so you'll have some sort of geometric 
capsid. The capsids can also wind around the nucleic acid, doesn't have to be a nice geometric shape. And so this would be a capsid. Now, your envelope viruses always have a capsid as well. So that doesn't change. The difference is your envelope viruses will also have an envelope around them. So it's a lipid bilayer. Now one of the main differences is that on the capsid virus, you will have your proteins on the outside of your capsid, whatever those proteins happen to be. You're going to have your genome on the inside. So if it's plus RNA, for example, you'll have your genome in there. And then you'll also have some proteins associated usually inside. Now you have the same thing over here. You will have your genome. We'll make this guy an RNA as well. And then you'll have your proteins. Um, but the differences on the surface is where you now have your receptors. So in the case of an envelope virus, the surface has the receptors. So why this is important is because if the envelope virus loses its envelope, it cannot infect because its tropism is on the membrane. The tropism of our non-envelope viruses are on the capsid. All right, so virus growth, we talked, to, we already discussed bacteria growth. Viruses have um, a different type of growth pattern, but with some similarities. So you're going to have initially a minimum infectious dose. Similar to bacteria. And so your virus is going to infect you, and this can be via blood, saliva, what, however you get infected, fecal oral, um, putting your hands in your mouth. And so you get an, a minimum infectious dose, MID, and then the, your virus is going to enter the cells. So here's where it enters. And down here it's replicating. And so typically during this period called the eclipse, there is no virus present in the blood. You can't find it. And then you have a period of the rise, and this is where you are getting viral release. And now the virus is going to be found in the blood, for example. And then this virus is going to go off and infect more cells, and you'll keep getting these. The virus goes into the cell, it replicates and gets released. In the cell, it replicates, gets released, and it's going to happen over and over again until you're able to control the infection. Now with respect to viruses, attachment to the host via those um, tropism is very important. So here's our host cell. So this is our cell, and we're going to be a CD4 T cell. And CD4 T cells get infected. We know they get infected by our HIV. And so we're going to have, over on this side, we're going to have HIV. There's HIV and HIV is an envelope virus, so it's going to have an envelope. And attached to that envelope, it's going to have its receptors. HIV has two, so it's going to have this square, which is going to be GP120, glycoprotein 120, and then it's going to have this arch, which is glycoprotein 41, GP41. And so on the CD4 T cell, the CD4 T cell will have a receptor that GP120 binds. And this is going to be the CD4 molecule. And then it's going to have another receptor that the GP41 binds. And this is going to be chemokine. and CXCR4. Okay, so your um, HIV can bind to both CD4 and CXCR4 and enter, and this is a CD4 tropic virus.
Now on the other end, we have measles. Measles is also an envelope virus, so it'll have its envelope. And measles has on its surface its H protein. And then on the surface of your um, CD4 cell, you have what's called a SLAM receptor. And the SLAM receptor is measles receptor. And so basically, they're both going to be able to infect the same cell. They're both going to infect uh, the CD4 T cell. I'm going to cut the CD4 in half. Here's our nucleus. And then we're going to have our genome over here. And we're going to leave space in our genome over here. So basically, your virus is going to attach and be able to infect your CD4 T cells. Your measles will release its genome. So here's measles. And your HIV will be able to release its genome. Okay, now HIV can also have a tropism for a macrophage. So here we'll have a macrophage. And a macrophage will have on its surface um, another chemokine called CCR5. And HIV will have on its protein, um, the glycoprotein will be able to bind to CCR5. And then this is going to be a macrophage tropic virus. And the macrophage tropic virus is thought to be the more infectious virus. And the, the CD4 tropic virus is thought to be the virus that exists mostly inside of a person because when you're going to remember HIV is going to be infectious at mucosal tissues and we have tissue resident macrophages. And so the tissue resident macrophages will get infected by the macrophage tropic virus, but that will quickly um, revert to a CD4 tropic virus. Okay, so in penetration, there's basically two ways to get in. Um, and if you're an envelope, you can use both of these ways. Or a capsid, you only have one way. So let me do this. Let's move these guys over. Okay, so we have one, an endosome. And two is fusion with cell membrane. And an endosome is receptor mediated. So our envelope virus can do both, and our capsid virus can only do the endosome. It cannot fuse with the cell membrane, it has to get picked up because it doesn't have a lipid bilayer, it can't fuse with our lipid bilayer. So in uncoding, We can have, for example, our HIV virus that has its lipid membrane. And it simply releases Oops. Uh, let me draw this with a black. Here's the cell membrane. And so HIV envelope will fuse, um, so you get fusion. And then you get your genome released. Alternatively, you can have um, let me get HIV again. We have our HIV with its envelope and it's bound to the receptor, so you have receptor. And then your, basically your cell membrane is going to enclose your HIV, 
So here's your cell membrane. And then this enters, and so now you have your HIV inside of an endosome. So this is an endosome. And so most viruses come in with a way to get out of endosomes. Um, and so HIV will be able to get out at some point, just like any other virus. And then the genome will be released. Okay, so just a little bit about um, RNA and protein synthesis. So um, terminology for virology is if you have a sense strand, then this is your genome. And you have an antisense. This is required to make the genome. Okay, so what I mean by that is, for example, let's talk about measles. So we have measles, which is a negative strand RNA. Okay, so it's going to become positive RNA, as we discussed, and this can go on to form proteins. This is also going to be the template to make more genome. So it's the antisense of the negative RNA. Okay, so this is going to be replication. And of course, this is translation. Um, and so What's really important for viruses, and viruses again are very simple. So for a simple virus like measles, you have a five prime end and a three prime end to their genome. And then in between, you have a linear, where you have a, um, a sequence of genes that are in order. And so you have an N protein, you have a P protein, you have the F protein, you have the H protein, and then something called a long protein. So the F and H are going to be on the surface. Nuclear protein is going to make up the capsid. The P protein is going to have many different functions in it. Some other proteins are going to get spliced out of it. But basically, you are going to trans, um, translate this and then you're going to have your, um, your ribosome fall off. And so you will get lots of N and little of L. So basically when you're transcribing the proteins, the, the proteins at the five prime end are going to get expressed more than the proteins at the three prime end. And so the way that the virus organizes itself, itself is that it wants all the proteins it needs a lot of at the five prime end and the proteins that it doesn't need very much of or that they are needed later on are going to be at the three prime end. Now HIV, just really quickly as a comparison, HIV is going to be a positive RNA, and then you're going to make a DNA from this. So this is reverse transcriptase. And then this DNA is going to go to the nucleus, so this occurs in the cytosol. and it's going to incorporate into the nuclear into the DNA the host DNA and then you're going to get transcription plus RNA and then you're going to go to the cytosol and then you can either get proteins or you can make your antisense. And then the antisense is going to make um, plus RNA, et cetera. So you can make new proteins new, um, or you can make um, new virus particles because now you have the genome again. And then the proteins are going to be transcribed and translated. 
Okay, so just as to recap, we have our difference. We have our plus RNA. And then this is going to make a minus RNA, which is the antisense. And then this is going to be the template for plus RNA genome. And then we have our minus RNA. So this is our genome. And our minus RNA is going to make a plus RNA, which is the antisense. And of course, this can make proteins. And this can make proteins. And this can also make more R minus RNA, which is the genome. And then, of course, our DNA has to go through messenger RNA to proteins. And then our retroviruses, such as HIV, is a plus RNA to a double-stranded DNA to host incorporation. to plus RNA, to minus RNA, and then back to the genome. Okay, and this part is in the uh, nucleus, and over here we have cytosol, and over here we have cytosol. And of course plus RNA makes proteins. Okay, so now assembly. So again, um, the virus life cycle is basically we have our tropism, we have our infection, we have our uncoding, we're going to have some sort of protein synthesis, and we're going to have our genome synthesis. And then we're going to have assembly, release, and infect again. Um, and so we're going to have a lot of proteins that are going to be made that are going to be non-structural. And these proteins can be polymerases. Um, they might be proteins that um, shut down host cell um, protein production, so they can be virulence um, proteins, etc. Other proteins are going to be structural, and these are things like your capsid, um, envelope, your tropism proteins. And it's really those um, structural proteins that are going to have to come together and they're going to form virus particles. And so this is going to occur in two ways. You have our enveloped. And so in our enveloped viruses, you're going to have the plasma membrane. And then you're going to have your virus add its proteins to the plasma membrane. And then you're going to have the virus genome get recruited to this area where you have proteins. And then eventually you will get release of a virus particle. On the other hand, if you have capsids, your capsids are going to increase in number not very good capsid. So these are capsid and so they're going to have their genomes inside somewhere and then these guys are going to they're going to burst out. So this is lysogenic. It kills the cells and this over here is our Lytic. So the buddying doesn't really kill the cells. Lysogenic always kills the cells. So anything that's a capsid has to fill up the cell with virus particles and then it bursts out.
And so that's kind of the release, so I won't go over that again. Now, just some general overview of differences in the life cycle of RNA and DNA viruses. Again, your DNA viruses are going to replicate in the nucleus. They are DNA, so they need our um, DNA um, replication should host machinery. And therefore, they're going to activate the cell cycle. And so all of these DNA viruses have some way to initiate the cell cycle because only when the cell cycle is initiated are all of the components that we use to replicate our cells, those enzymes are now going to be available for the DNA virus to replicate its own virus particles and virus genome. And then our RNA viruses, of course, are going to be mostly in the cytoplasm, except for our influenza. Um, and some will have to have RNA-dependent RNA polymerases. Okay, so a retrovirus will also have to have reverse transcriptase. Okay, so that's the difference between DNA and RNA.